Okay, we're recording. Okay, so we're on the record. Um, I'd like to call to order. Oh, I, I have no PDF. I brought my email up. I'd like to call to order the uh, Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County regular meeting of October 26, 2020. Uh, it's 5.05 p.m. Uh, Mr. Secretary, would you kindly call the roll? Yes. Chair Maziarz. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Director Mannheim. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Lanier. Here. Director Shaw. Hmm. Director Gudger. So I see we have not here Rand, Shaw, and Gudger. Is that correct? Keith uh, just joined. Oh, oh okay. I don't I, see him. You need, see maybe him. need to let him in. He's I did not let here. him in, but he disappeared when I let him in. Oh, oh, there he is. There, there he is. is. There he is. All right. Director Gudger Director is. Gudger is present. All right. So we all know that we do have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, so we can move on to item number two, oral communications. Uh, any member of the public like to address us on any item? not listed on today's agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the board. Seeing none, we can move on to item number three, consideration of late additions to the agenda, any additions or deletions to the consent and regular agendas. Is there anything that anybody would like to add or pull from the agenda? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to the consent agenda, which is items four and five. Uh, item four is to approve the minutes of our last board meeting of September 28th, 2020. Item five is to approve recommendation of the finance committee to accept the September 2020 financial reports. Um, do any board members have any questions or comments on these items? I have a comment. Director Hall. On the uh, finance report, just to call your attention, uh, we have some new tenants and uh, Dignity Health. And you'll see the uh, lease payments or rent payments we're getting have uh, stabilized, which was really good news. But I also kind of wanted to thank the members of the committee. We spent quite a bit of time uh, and Janice and the uh, Mid-County Committee going over numbers for the Aptos location. And I don't know if we really talked about it too much last time, but it was a great idea, except when we looked at the terms and the numbers and the financing that was available for it, it just didn't pencil out. Mm -hmm. So it's no no longer under consideration. There are other things that the Mid-County uh, Committee will be looking at, but I just wanted to thank the Finance Committee for the time they put into it. It was a team efforts, the wrong word to put, it was team strengths that came into it and it all worked out. Uh, maybe not for a successful outcome in terms of the center, but it was a successful outcome that we didn't pursue something that didn't make economic sense. Yeah, that's good. Anyhow, right. with that, I'll make a motion to approve items four and five. Second. All right, so we have a motion from Director Hall, a second from Director O'Driscoll. Mr. Secretary, would you kindly call the roll call vote? Um, Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Lanier. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Hall. Joe, did he say anything? Nope. Can yep. you hear us, Joe? Yes. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> Director Lorette. Yes. Chair Mazier. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. That passes unanimously. Um, all right. So we can move right along to our, our um, very slim regular agenda and item number six is the oral report of our executive director. Becca, kindly take it away. Okay. Um, this is the report for September. And so um, under financial, uh, we have first the, I like to look at all the federal funding options that we have out there. And uh, we did on the EIDL, I did get a chance to speak to our, we have a person in charge of us, a human, which is great. And uh, I spoke to him. Um, he called me at 6 a.m. in the morning and then I returned the call and he didn't really know why I was calling him. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he called me <laughs> incidentally or what, but um, we're still in the pipeline. I was able to get that much out of him. So um, that's good. Um, we're just, it just takes a long time. I have imagined it's just a really big pipeline. I think a lot of people are in it. And with our SBA loan, uh, the, we are um, 
now able to do the procedure we'll go through to um, get the loan forgiven. They've opened it up to report now. So uh, Mel's gathering the information we need, which isn't much. All we used it for was payroll. And so we just have to get a document from, uh, we have to print a couple documents out from QuickBooks and, and something from EDD. And then we'll be, we'll be good on that. So we'll take care of that um, this month. We have a long time to do it, but we're gonna do it right away. Um, in co-working, uh, our break-even number for co-working is usually $10,000, and we did adjust that because of COVID. And uh, for the shelter and placements, which seem to be going on and on, but our, our uh, projection at the time we did this for September was $9,000, and we earned $10,799. So, yeah, so we did pretty well. And we enrolled four new members, new members in the month of September, and now we have about 187, which is kind of where we usually are. We're around 180, 80, 80 to 90. Um, so we haven't lost a whole bunch of business or anything. Under paid services, we did uh, 14 government meetings in September and we did four government webinars. And under facilities and equipment, we are having a really hard time getting our captioner working in the county. We bought the we bought the lower end model uh, because it we needed certain outputs for the county. What they they like to have a closed circuit captioned feed, and um, the new the newer more fancy version that you did approve was um, has a encoder built into it. So with the 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 lesser one, the encoder was an outboard thing, and we just can't. He, poor Victor's been working on it for six months and he can't get it to work. And we've been working with the company and they can't get it to work. So we are sending it back and we're going to get the upgraded version that will have the captioner included because through all of their testing, they determined that the encoder was the problem. So that's probably more information than you want to know. But um, we're working on that. And we just had the new captioner for the city arrive and it won't boot up. So we're sending that back. They've had like, they've, they've, they got it to work at CTV, but when they take it to the county, it doesn't work. So we're, 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 we're pushing through. It's not a big deal. It's just taking us longer than we wanted. Um, but we've had really good, Victor and Lynn have been working on it and, and they have tapped Matreya for expertise as well. And it's been a real team effort. And so far we, we haven't had a happy ending, but we're, we're learning more and more. So um, moving on to mission programming, we did the, um, the, the uh, do-it-yourself candidates um, statements video. Usually uh, every election year, we let candidates come into the studio and we record them and then we edit a, um, all of their statements into one program. And we put that on the air several times. And we also create individual YouTube videos for them and they can use them in their own uh, promotion. And this year they had to record themselves. So we had given them a lot of um, YouTube, a, a lot of uh, Zoom advice. We, we sent um, information out to them on how to do the videos with the camera and how to do them on Zoom. And then uh, we received them back in, in time. They were on time, every, every, well, a couple of them weren't on time, but most of them were on time. And uh, we were able to, um, Lynn Dutton assembled the program it was about 40 minutes long and it was, it was, it looked good. It was a great, a great effort. Some of them even went and had professional videos done. So um, we got uh, a lot of our, our local candidates on uh, television and we put that on our website and on Facebook and on YouTube and all over. So lots of information out there for people who are getting ready to vote. In the social media area, we've been, we continued to post all the press releases. This is during September um, for the fire status reports and social media accounts throughout the day until September 11th when we reduced that to once a day. And uh, we posted all the FEMA and other recovery information. And we still continue to do that when it comes. There's not as much of it as there used to be. But we put it on Facebook, and we put it on Twitter, and we put it on our own um, our webpage. Then for the election, we did a show called How to Vote in a Pandemic. 
and we interviewed Gail Pellerin and uh, it was a nice interview with her, a little over 30 minutes, and she explained all the many, many, many ways to vote. Boy, they have been having their thinking caps on. They have figured out everything that might be an obstacle and have come up with um, something uh, to help. So this was a really good and informative and uh, interview. It wasn't the usual. They come up with a lot of new ideas. Like you can, you can check your polling. You can. There are 18 polling places. You can go to any of them. You can check online to see which one is busy and which ones are not, and go to the ones that are not busy. And then when you go there, you still don't have to stand in line. They just text you when it's your turn. So it's a really, huh. there's some really nice developments. So I was glad we were able to do this information and do this and get it all out, information out for people who are still, you know, who are not rushing to the polls. Um, and let's see, uh, the Canada's Forces, the, the pandemic, and um, we continue to share all of her voting messages on all our social platforms as we get closer and closer to the election. And we're also still sharing any information from public health about the coronavirus that we get. We haven't done an interview with them for a while, so it's probably time for us to do that. And we have done some um, outreach this year for the first time I was able to get interns. I got two interns from UCSC and two from San Jose State. And so we are doing a pandemic production model and we're making a program that they are the associate producers for. So we're, we've set up, we have booked three shows which they will uh, put together and edit. They found their own guests and um, they are really good guests. They're, they did a great job. I'm real excited for them. They have. Um, one person will be a great producer. She tracked down, um, oh, let's see, Curtis Ryford, who is the guy uh -huh. who drives around the really big truck raising yeah. money for oh, the yeah. Native American yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, he's not easy. To, he's not very, he says, well, you know, I'm not very tech savvy, so I hardly check my phone. So she had gone downtown and on the west side and walked around looking for him because she knows she's seen him down there. And she took a couple of weeks of calling him every day and sending notes to his post office box. And she finally got him. And um, he met with her at his giant truck and they sat on top of the truck and did the pre-interview. So he has great stories to tell. He's a really interesting guy and he's, he's very um very cogent and and excited and has a lot to say so we're happy to get him and also um jody frankiani who is a noted wildlife photographer one of the few women who do that and she's award-winning she's got some amazing pictures and she not only takes pictures on land but she dives and takes uh, some amazing pictures of whales and some have been used in studies because she has gotten shots of things that hadn't been seen before by science scientists rather. So she'll be a great interview. And then um, also um, Rachel Kippen, who is um, she, you probably know her, she's the ED for um, Sea Odyssey, but she also is an activist in her own right. She does the Sea Odyssey, but on the side, she does a lot of these other things to, to protect the seas. And whenever she does one, she also works with tattoo artists to develop a tattoo to commemorate it. <laughs> so I think that she has like woven her art in with her her, 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 her purpose and she's woven that into her job. So it's a very interesting, interesting combo there. And so we're really excited to have all those, three of those Santa Cruzans on TV. And that's our report for September. Can right. I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the captioning company, mm. I, um, are, are they the only ones, is this the only captioning system that would work for us? Yeah, they're the only ones that do this. They ordinarily are great and they have been really good helping us. They've got yeah. tech guys working on it and they've spent hours with us working on it. And I think the first thing was that it was the, uh, turned out to be the outboard piece of equipment wasn't talking. The encoder. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was the encoder. And then this time, I think something, both Victor and Lynn think it's a hardware problem. It probably was damaged in transit but they're doing everything they can to make sure. They're checking every possibility to see if they get it to boot up and it goes through this whole string of things it does, but it has to apparently start a lot of other programs or robots or something on top of the machine to do other jobs. And when that happens, that's when something bogs down. So we're um, there. FYI, can I interrupt you for a second? I sure. just got a text from Joe who oh. needs you to let him back in. Oh. He lost well. his connection. 
I'm sorry, I have my report over that thing where it says admit. <laughs> so I'm like, he's back. Hey. Okay. <laughs> now, All right, would you mind um, giving your report again, Becca? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I take it you read uh, the, the print version of Becca's report. It was, you're, you're still muted, Joe. But um, I followed along. Did you have any good. questions, Joe, since we didn't? <laughs> no, no. It, I think you covered everything. OK. A any other uh, questions? Yeah, from I, I just have one other comment. I really want to Please. thank you, Becca, for following up on all the financial opportunities to keep us afloat during the uh, pandemic. So you're welcome. It's the, good work. the least I can do. I hope we come up with some more some more fun ideas. I am thinking about it all the time. All right. Fantastic. Um, all right. Well, yes, thank you very much, Becca, for the report. Uh, it sounds like a lot of wonderful things going on. I will mention uh, as a county employee who's, I mean, yeah, you, you gave me credit for helping them with it, but pretty much uh, all I do is let them in the door to the data center <laughs> and then sit there with my laptop. Um, but, you know, if they need any help, I'm always happy to help as I or can. You've answered questions on things that, you know, that right. it takes a lot of heads to figure those crazy right. things out. There's so well, many parts. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at this as a, as a mixed blessing. Like one of the things that we've been, we're kind of living between two worlds here that as we have, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure Larry's intimately familiar with the sorted history, but, you know, uh, IQM2, which is, uh, you know, we use their minute track for our agenda management. They got purchased by Excella, which got, and then they got oh. sold to Granicus. And, and so we're actually <laughs> running two, uh, media servers right now. We're running the Granicus Media Manager and the IQM2 encoder, and you know we're supporting both of them. And it's more work for us. So um, there is a migration path to move to just the Granicus, which was Granicus, the one that yeah, yeah uh, the Granicus Media Manager, uh, which works better. It's high def. The IQM2 is standard def. Uh, yeah. So it's something that we need to do anyways, and uh, this will be a good. Um, Oh yeah. Motivation for us to do, go ahead and do that. But. That'll be an easier interface. But this newer machine has, yeah, has the, yeah. So we'll have to, yeah, we know we have to figure out some way to get, to get the, we still have to figure out a way to get the closed circuit thing, but Victor has some ideas. So I think right. we'll be able to pull it off. Sounds good. All right. And I haven't heard any complaints, which is a good thing. I, I haven't heard of any lawsuits being <laughs> filed yet. So, um, okay. uh, yeah, are there any further questions or comments from the board before we move on? Uh, okay, seeing none, thank you very much, Becca, for that report. Um, glad to hear about all the wonderful activities. Um, so we can move on to item number seven, which is the oral report from the Volunteer Advisory Committee Chair, which is um, Mr. Gudger, uh, Director Gudger. Keith, do you have any uh, comments, uh, news to report from the VAC? Uh, just that a couple of producers have been bugging in about when the studio is going to open. And Ian told them the same thing that I told them, that when we get into the yellow zone is the answer. Okay. Well, I know schools are, uh, Santa Cruz High School is opening up back up January uh, 4th or something like that. And really? Hmm. Santa Cruz uh, Waldorf School is opening up on Wednesday. So hopefully those are yeah. good, good omens for what's to come, though. I've, I've seen some scary numbers on cases and yeah that's in Why? other places so let's um, hope that doesn't send our numbers the opposite direction right, yeah. right. so anyways thank you very much um keith anything to add to that nope you muted yourself so um anyways yes all in good time you know safety first right before uh hopefully people will be raring to come back and have so many ideas and a lot of inspiration from all these months of um of uh uh, so, you know, staying at home. Um, all right, so I can, we can move on to item number eight, which is the oral report of the board chair. I don't really have much to add, except uh, my personal thanks, Becca, for, uh, you know, as a Santa Cruz City voter, you know, we've got seven, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't even register at first that they're all, all the candidates are, are women, you know, and then I, I was watching one of the candidate forums on Community TV's YouTube channel, and it was uh, not, uh, it was, um, I forget, it was like a neighborhood. Uh, oh, it's it was a, like, yeah, it's the, yeah, the neighborhood one, yeah. Right, so, and, and it was great to, to see all the different candidates and, it, you know, it doesn't make it that much easier because they're all super bright, articulate uh, candidates. It seems like all of them would be, um, 
you know, worthy of voting for. So um, I still have some work cut out for me before Tuesday, but um, I really appreciated being able to uh, tune in and see that. And uh, it sounds like uh, I might want to check out the 40 minute version, which is uh, slightly shorter than that other version, which I didn't get all the way through. But um, yeah, I'm glad that we're serving our community in that way. And um, I hope we can yeah. continue. I miss I miss the uh, election night coverage that we used to do. So hopefully by uh, the next major election, you know, we'll be in a position to be able to do that again. Um, have on the local luminaries of the political scene uh, stop by the studio and share their wisdom with us. Um, so that's all I have. So we can move on unless anybody has any questions for me. Uh, oh, actually, you know, I was going to throw something out here um, since we're here. Uh, last year, I think we did a board retreat in October. Um, previously, I think we'd done it in August or September. So I just wanted to, um, you know, since we're all here, poll to see if uh, anybody has the bandwidth or the, the um, inclination to try to do some sort of a virtual board retreat, um, or if we should just, you know, continue hanging on by our fingernails until things get back to normal. <laughs> Director Hall, you had yeah, a... I think it's perfect that Director Hall used his fingernail <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> I was just going to see all your faces. I didn't... Uh, there's some connectivity problems here, so I figured let's face it. turned off the video. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does anybody have any uh, uh, guidance in terms of trying to schedule My... a board retreat? I'll just give you my personal instinct, given what we're going through right now. I don't think another Zoom meeting for something like that is, would be all that valuable. Okay. Correct. I agree. So, sounds reasonable. Um, okay, good. Then well, I will um, write that off for this sure, year. Sure, beginning of 2021, it's all going to be great. So oh, yes, of course. <laughs> it will just, as soon as the calendar changes, it'll all be good. <laughs> yeah. We can all take a deep <laughs> breath and a sigh of relief and um, go on with and living our dreams. On, then continue on quarantining through half of next year, probably as well. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Well, um, thank you for the honest feedback. And um, um, let's move on to item number 10 announcements. Do any, uh, I don't have anything else to add. Do any board members have any upcoming events of interest to the board or members of the community? All right. I, this doesn't really quite fall into that category, but do we know what day we're meeting in November? Are we meeting the Monday bef right before Thanksgiving, which would oh. be our normal day? That's the when the fourth Monday would be, I think. Let's see. <clears throat> I can right. try to bring up. It'd be the twenty-third, and that that's would the, be the fourth. Right. That's the fourth Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be and it is right would you before, be like three three days before Thanksgiving. All right. Is that I mean, going to that, be? I just, I, I, that actually does work for me. My concern is if it gets pushed up a week earlier, I would not be available. Oh, okay. Um, good to know. Well, um, good for me. Okay. Okay for me. Sounds good. We could all bring some mashed potatoes and <laughs> Ethan and I can pumpkin have our tofu pie. turkey. Yeah, pumpkin pie. Everybody likes pumpkin pie, right? Oh. Um, Great. So um, I guess, <laughs> no, no pumpkin pie. No. How about some baked squash? We'll bring some you? pecan pie for you. Pecan, yes. Okay. <laughs> Rhubarb. Right. Yes. Okay. With that, I guess I'll just enjoin everybody to go out and vote. Please vote. Already have. But only once. All Already. right. Very good. Yeah. Already have. Already voted. All right. Then so. go out and find somebody Move else it. to who's, who's uh, eligible and get them. Oh, uh, Matreya, one thing before we all go. An announcement, uh, Becca. Do you want to mention what we heard about Kevin Bowling? So all the rest of the folks oh, know yeah. first who he is and what's happening. Yeah. Has he announced? Is that a public announcement? I don't think he's announced a date yet. Um, if it isn't a public announcement, then we'll just skip it until yeah. we. Yeah. I don't okay. know. It's public. He just talked to me, so I don't know. Yeah, it's coming down the pike, but I don't think there's a specific uh, date yet that's been said. He hasn't announced it to the department. Uh, for, for I think it's just in the future somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Away. Well, that's fine. We'll leave it in the future. 
Here comes yeah. I'll be retiring in the future as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be retiring if I survive that long, right? No. Yeah. So Matilda's here just in time to move that we adjourn. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I finally found it. I couldn't find it. And then I finally said, oh, I have to look on the Becca. She sent us her thing. And I couldn't well, find if you look, it. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. 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 It's on the agenda. Oh, shoot, and I had the agenda open as I'm ready. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay, well, so don't, you, don't feel bad. I got, yeah, I got cut out of the, 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 the half the meeting because of a connection problem. My tray of the agenda was not on the website. What? Did I not actually post it? It's not oh. there. Oh, maybe I, I went to post it and then I... Uh, Gosh, I'm sorry. I talk to you in the middle. That's what happens to me. <laughs> and I have a thing on my desktop at the end of the day I never sent. Okay, well, I think Ian did post it physically on, on in the window at Community TV. So. Yeah, correct. Um, okay, so, well, thanks, Keith, and my apologies. All right, well. Uh, so anyway, sorry, I missed the whole thing. It was fairly routine. Uh, Becca's report was was the most exciting thing I think. Are you going to have this on TV now with me saying sorry I couldn't find it? <laughs> yes. Yep. Sadly, yes. <laughs> oh boy. We had a quorum. There might be one other person in the universe that knows that, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, then I'll move to a joint meeting. Second. Um, okay. Uh, do we need a roll call, or should we just do it by? Acclamation. Acclamation. Okay. Acclamation. I'll, I'll raise your high hand. All right. Thank you all. Here's my fingernail. All right. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Thank you. Bye. Have a good election. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.